in the Lam Rim, Lama Tsongkhapa explains uh, four particular aspects of karma um, that are very helpful to remember. In particular, people who are doing this module as a study, please remember these. <laughs> okay, the first one, it, it says, karma is certain. So this needs explanation. It means that a particular cause creates a particular result. Even if we don't understand what was the cause of the result, or we don't understand what will be the result of the cause, one thing we can know is that the cause and the result are related in a definite relationship. It's not something that can change um, along the way. It's a very definite relationship. In the same way that a particular seed will create a particular plant. So, we often say a rice seed will create a rice. A wheat seed will create a wheat, and so forth. Okay? There's no way that a rice seed can create wheat, or a wheat seed can create rice. That's impossible. And karma is like that. The problem with karma is that it's a very subtle cause and effect. It's something that ordinary people like us, we can't see. The farmer can see with the seeds, or the gardener can see with the seeds. And in, in our life we can see many things where the cause and effect is obvious. But to see directly the cause and effect of actions, they say that only a Buddha can see that. Now, this gives you some understanding of how fine, how subtle this is. I just mentioned, I've, some of you probably heard me say this before. Lama Zopa Rinpoche said, one day scientists will discover karma and then everybody will believe it. It's, it's a good joke, but also, when I thought about it more, I realized that karma is a force, in the same way that magnetism is a force, or electricity, or nuclear energy. These are all forces which scientists didn't know about before. And then somebody discovered it, and now they know about it. And because they know about it, then they can uh, do things with it. They can manipulate it. They can utilize it. With karma, it's, it's a very subtle level of uh, cause and effect. I mean, even the mind is something which science barely recognizes. You know, science can sort of understand uh, the neurons and those kind of things in the brain. But um, in general, mainstream um, neuroscience doesn't even recognize the mind as something not made of material particles. It's still very difficult for contemporary science to recognize even the mind, which is something beyond the material particles. It's something which is, has a cause and effect, which interacts with the body, it's affected by the body, it affects the body, uh, it, it has its own cause and effect, the mind. But karma is even more difficult to understand than the existence of the mind. I mean, many people in this group, I'm sure, you can accept the reality of a mind which is not material, because of your experience in meditation. You had some experience that the mind has its own cause and effect, which somehow transcends the physical body. To some extent you have that experience. And from that you can feel, maybe we could say, increasing confidence 
that the mind exists as not physical. Some of you may still have doubts about that, that's fine. I'm not trying to tell you what you must think. But what I'm really saying is that karma is even more difficult because it's a kind of more subtle cause and effect. And yet, it's a very helpful explanation of how things happen in our experience. Why was I at that place? Why am I not in color? Why not? Why are they not here? There's some cause and effect of experience. It's, it's hard for us. It's very hard for us. Because we can't see exactly what the cause was. So, to some extent, we have to have confidence in the Buddha to really accept the teaching on karma. And of course, that's not something we can just uh, manufacture. I mean, some people might try, then it becomes like blind faith, like ordinary religion. Oh yes, the Buddha said so, therefore it must be true. Easy. No, that's not Buddhism. That's not. The Buddha said, don't accept things just because I said so. You must check. So with these things like karma, which are called very hidden, means the ordinary mind cannot comprehend it. How can we trust the Buddha? So then we have to really check up the Buddha. That the Buddha taught this, like emptiness, impermanence, these things which we can experience, which we can check. And also, why would the Buddha trick us? Why would the Buddha, does the Buddha have any reason to, to tell us something which isn't true? To, for the Buddha's advantage or something like that? In order to get followers or some, You know, we have to check all these things. If we become really confident, then we can start to have some confidence in the Buddha's statements. For example, the Buddha said, from generosity comes wealth. From generosity comes wealth. That means if you do generous actions, then in future, you will be wealthy. That means that if we are reasonably wealthy now, and I'm sure everybody in this room is relatively wealthy compared to people who are very poor, then that means you were generous in the past, if you believe the Buddha's teaching. That means somehow, through your generous action, you created some seed or potential with your mind stream, and later it drew you, it drew you like a magnet, with some sort of force, towards a situation in which you became reasonably wealthy. That's how karma works. It's like a current in the sea. It's pulling you in a certain direction. If you make the seed, if you make the potential here, then as a result you will be drawn in that direction to experience that result. It may involve being born to those parents in that part of the world, in that kind of environment, where so, such and such opportunities are presented for you, with such and such an intelligence, that means you will use those opportunities. There's so many factors, it's very complex. But that is the teaching, that karma is definite. From a particular seed comes a particular result. I'm, uh, I've been talking about the positive one, but, you know, the negative one is also true. You know, it's quite, we already have the potentials to be born as a slug. What's that in Hebrew? <laughs> yeah. We have that potential on our mind stream now. And if we create the causes around the time of our death, that is what we will be in the next life. It's quite possible. Because what are the causes for that kind of rebirth? Main cause is ignorance. What does ignorance mean? It means to believe very solidly in what is happening to you. 
and to act with it in a sort of stupid way, like not thinking about anything, not, not using your human intelligence, just acting in a kind of stupid way, just following your senses, something like that. That is going to lead to an animal rebirth. That is going to create the cause to be an animal, such as that one. Or time of death, or You create the causes during life, and at the time of death, some mental factor will ripen that seed to throw you into the next life. And we have that potential, I'm sorry to say. But that can happen to us. Imagine how it would be if you were a slab. Imagine how it would be. Okay. You don't have so much in this room? Yeah, yeah. But people don't, don't see them. Oh. Yeah. The All right, yeah. something similar. Yeah. A snail. A snail. Okay. okay, we say snail. If it's more common for you, snail. Imagine how it would be. Imagine. The snail has a mind. Don't think snail has no mind. It's just nothing. It's not, it's not a plant. Snail has mind. What is this mind like? Just imagine. <laughs> what is it doing? It's just moving like in darkness. And then something comes, it goes inside its shell, and then it gets hungry, so it comes out, and it's got these two horns. Twice. It's his eyes inside. Uh -huh. so it, and then it's finding something to eat. Imagine, imagine. It's, it, Really it's a difficult, it's a dark, it's a kind of darkness, isn't it? So what is the cause of, to be born like that in that kind of darkness? The cause is to have a mind now, which is in a kind of darkness of stupidity. Just, you know, some people, we see them. Can he be happy also? A snail? Yeah. When it gets the food, it's very nice. Yeah. Nice juicy leaf. That's happy. For snail, that's happiness. Yes. 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 It's a kind of happiness. But it's also, in general, it's a darkness. Just think of it in terms of the spiritual opportunity. It's nil. It can't practice anything. It can't choose anything. Really. Maybe it can choose to go inside the shell, or choose to come out and find some more food. That's all. <clears throat> Not much more. And maybe there's more. I don't know them very well. Birds, a little bit more. I, I have, you know, I, I study the birds, how their minds are thinking. Birds are quite intelligent. But they are sitting in a very nice place. Yeah. Like the golden, the fresh golden. Okay. Oh, okay. Sitting in wonderful house. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> you are you are imputing that as an artist from the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Really, from the inside. I mean, it can look beautiful to you. Many things in nature look beautiful to us. That's why people make movies of all these fish in the how Red do Sea. You know? All these different things. How do we know? How do you know? How can we know that he knows? Uh, just imagine. What it's like to be in that because body. Because I have a mind, so I can imagine, but yeah. what does he okay. have? It's true. How do we know? Maybe if you practice very, very good, at the end you become a snail. I saw one climbing I don't on, a, really don't okay. on a paper cup the yeah. other day. Mm -hmm. And I thought, what came over this guy? He couldn't think. It's not where his food is. He mm. should go in the garden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the snail is not... It's the first time I saw okay, a snail. On yeah, one one at a time. So, yeah. Sorry, she... The, the snail, is the snail more captured than the people in, you know, yeah. in modern life, in, in, you know, running from place to place? Mm -hmm. I mean, Okay. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. like, some are the same, some well, are not. Think, it's, it's, a good, it's a good question. Is it obnoxious that you think that we are better? No, no, I'm not saying better. I'm not saying better. We, we have many opportunities. Yeah, we do say that. That's stupid. We shouldn't say that. Right? No, we shouldn't say that. It's arrogant. 
But what we can, we can compare the opportunity of one being against another, especially the opportunity for spiritual practice, and the opportunity to choose between what to do and what not to do. We have that opportunity. I think most animals do not have that opportunity. Uh, also the opportunity to think about the future and decide to create some <coughs> good causes for the future instead of creating bad causes for the future. Most animals, as far as I can see, are just doing what is immediately satisfying. They're not thinking about the long term. I mean, you, may be just, you might say, how do you know? Okay, you can say, how do you know? So do you think, you think that the animals, like your dog or your cat, do you think they're thinking about the next life? You know, oh, how do you know? Because they have the opportunity, as you said. Yeah. I think that's true. We humans have the opportunity, because we have an intelligence that can distinguish between what to do and what not to do. We also have the intelligence that can project into the future and think, I want certain results in the future, Therefore, I'm going to do this action now. For example, in business, people do that all the time. They invest money in order to get some benefit in the future. But animals, they don't have that kind of intelligence, as far as we can see. Yeah. But, but, how but, does on the other, but on the other hand, they don't have any... I mean, if you look at Dexter, if you all know, so he doesn't have vicious thinking. He doesn't think, oh... If no, 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 really? no. I'm not trying to say really? what's... Really? How He's do a you know? I know Dexter, of course he does. What a vicious child. Yes, when he sees a cat, you bet. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, okay. I don't know if it's vicious, it's more surviving. No, Michal, what you're, the point you're making is that humans also have the capacity to choose to do terrible things. And humans can cause much more trouble than animals. I think that's what you're saying. <laughs> and that is true. Because of our intelligence, we can also cause more harm. So we can create much worse karma than any animal. The, the next, the Definitely. Sure. I think that's your point. Therefore we should not be arrogant and say humans are better than animals. Because some humans are much worse than animals. In the sense of the results they create. Is that, is that your point? Fine. No, I'm not arguing about that. All I'm arguing about is that we have more opportunity because of our intelligence. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, um, this, you, you I just wanted to ask my good reason, how does, how, if the animal uh, has any chance to evolve to... Yeah, animals have, uh, we have beginningless uh, lives and we have the potentials for all kinds of rebirth and the animal can die with a peaceful, positive mind. And animals also can have compassion and love. It's not like everything in an animal's mind is negative. And therefore, they can ripen some good seed at the time of death and be reborn as a human. Yeah. What you say now is the answer of what I thought is that my common sense tells me that uh, as most of the population is not practicing, yeah. it means that most of the population will become sluggish. So, but if you say that, that on the other side, that animals, of course, can evolve also, or yeah. also reborn to humans. It's possible. It's, it's not very common. Balance. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not common. In terms of Next generation, no. but, but animals often die being eaten by other animals, so they die with fear and anger. Mm -hmm. But so, but but it is possible for an animal to die with a positive mind. Yeah. But the teaching is that to be a human is very rare. That's one thing, mm -hmm. and we can see the number of animals on the planet compared to the number of humans. So we can see that. The norm is for the animal to be reborn as another animal. I have much more opportunity to create really bad karma in my life, much more than Dexter. Yes, yeah, true. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's true. Really? Yeah, Just yeah. because I'm human. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hmm? And does a dog or a cat have a good karma? Uh -huh. I have a question about the, the link between the cause and effect. And the karma. Uh -huh. So I understand it's very subtle that we, although we are intelligent human beings, we, we can't really but the whole purpose isn't it to learn from yeah i mean the whole idea if, if i had um, uh, in my past uh, life something i did very wrong and yeah. then i'm i'm
experiencing hurdles in this life because of what I did. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, in, why it was hidden from us? Because then I could learn from it and take into the future uh, better. There wasn't a god who decided to hide it from you. Yes, also. It's <laughs> just part of the. It's the nature of karma that is a very subtle cause and effect. So it's very hard for us to experience. That's why. It's not that somebody decided to make it hidden. One more person over here, yeah? Uh, you say that the moment of death is very critic for the next day. Uh, yes, it is, yeah. What, what if a person lives in, in good uh, intentions and good spirits, but the moment of death is full of fear and anger or whatever? What then happens? They will ripen a negative seed. But all the good things they did will still be their potential for after that. Yeah, so it's not wasted. Okay, so the first point of, is that karma is definite. That's the first point. That's the first, we have, there's four points, remember, so I want to have time for the other three. But this is the most important, probably. It's very, very important. Karma is definite. And in general, we say, a harmful cause will create a suffering result. A helpful cause or constructive cause will create a happy result. It's something like that. But that's just very general. Then when it comes down to specifics, like from generosity comes wealth, the Buddha made, gave many teachings about what causes what. And it's very interesting. For instance, if you're angry, it says that, that you, you will be ugly. So if you're attractive now, think, oh great, I must have been very patient in my past life. If you're attractive and you're angry. Exactly. So be careful. Well, ugly is what other people find unattractive. Unattractive. And that means that you don't have many friends. If people find you unattractive, you don't have many friends. But if you're attractive, everybody wants to know you. They like you. This is why you told me I look like 16 years old. <laughs> no, 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 that just occurred to me. <laughs> okay, so the second point is that karma increases. A small action over time, it, the, the power of the, the potential increases. So if it's a, you can even do a small positive action, and you can have a big positive result. But you can do a small negative action and have a big negative result. And this is unlike uh, the cause and effect in the material uh, domain. But it, it's sometimes compared to like a small seed can create a huge tree. So, so maybe, uh, maybe a little bit like that. But it's said that over time the karma increases in its potential, in its potency. Kind of some, some people say that because of the karmic, the karma, then you have a tendency to, to increase the power of that through your attitudes in, in the future. But I, I don't know whether it's that or whether it's just one of the properties of karma. That this is one of the things that the Buddha taught. So, so both of these things are things we can't actually see. So we either accept them or we, we just say, well, I don't know. But this is what the Buddha taught. So that's my job here, is to try and convey to you what the Buddha taught. Okay? Um, and this is made very clear in the Lam Rum. So the first one is that karma is definite, and the second is that uh, karma increases. Increase. Hmm? Increases or decreases? Increase. Increases. Increases, increases no. in each no. 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 Not decreases. Decreases. Yeah. 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 Ah, yeah, yeah. No. Purification is, is a topic that we're going to go 100% next time. This time we're trying to introduce uh, the general topic, but please, I should reassure you, purification is possible. That means to neutralize the seeds, at least neutralize them, if not destroy them. So uh, there's no karma that we cannot stop. We can stop the karma. We can stop it through. If you know what is the karma, yeah. what is the you, you, you can't see the karma. If you no, no, you can even, even even when you don't know what it is. Really? Yeah. 
next we'll talk about it next time, but there are various practices that you can do even for karmas that you don't remember. For example... I'm coming. <laughs> so many good karmas. Assume, assume that in previous lives you killed many beings. Assume it because you were different kinds of animals or whatever, mm -hmm. that did that, naturally. And also, as a human, you probably did it. So, through the practices of purification, you can purify that. So that you don't have the right, you don't have the effect. What? We translated the... Uh, yeah, the that's next time. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, the third one, the third one is you will not experience the results of actions that you did not do. So you cannot experience the results of somebody else's action. That means that you're not a victim. That means you're not a victim. Thank you. That's very important. For example, we might say, oh, I am experiencing the results of my mother's actions. Very yes. foolish. <laughs> <laughs> but, if my mother did something wrong, let's say she did some bad things to, to me, she will experience the results of that. But if I'm having some suffering, it's because of what I did in previous life. That's, that's the difference. In Judaism, it's not like that. I say, I want to do all the machinery, but I need to care. In Judaism, when I want to do something, then you don't need to do it. But it travels on the family. That's true, a whole field of things. Yes, it's not only in Judaism. You say that it's like it's illogical. It's also in, um, there's a play by Henry Gibson called Ghosts, oh. and it's about this very same thing that it's, uh, it's because the, the, the father had syphilis and then the son is experiencing this mm. terrible disease and he's going to die from it. Mm. And so it's called ghosts because everybody has these ghosts from the past mm. that are kind of manipulating you. So this uh, Buddhism completely rejects, mm. completely rejects this theory. Um, and Buddhism says, sure, if the, if the father did something wrong, then the father will get the result. Mm -hmm. And if I have some suffering now, I created the cause. So it's, it's a different approach. Yeah, but I think so it's, it's kind of judge, judging other people. Yeah. When your father was like this, so yeah. I judge you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, this is psychological. Yeah. I want to show with you something that connecting to this idea. My father was in the concentration camp. And when I was about 30 years old, I, I was suffering so much, uh, like he was suffering. I don't know how, I was right. a very happy person, sure. but I was very suffering. And then the causes bring me to Germany, mm -hmm. and I lived in Germany. And then I was connected with some architect, and uh, they invited me to make an environment sculpture in a, a German embassy in Finland. Mm -hmm. And when I heard it, suddenly I had everything, uh, it was very complete. In the way that when I make all the skits, mm. everything was about uh, chairs. Mm. And uh, like uh, sitting together and in the entrance, like chairs and so on. Mm -hmm. And when I came, I tried to be very hungry because everything that they wanted to, uh, to ask me to do, I already had it in skits. Mm -hmm. But I was very quiet and only in the end when I showed them my skits. Anyway, it took a few days and then and they decided that I will make the sculpture. It was a very big uh, competition. It was a very great, a big honor, wonderful. And then they asked me to make a, a psifas, a mosaic. Mosaic, mosaic in the reception room, something like this. And here I was stuck. Never mind. And then they asked me, from where did you have the idea 
and in this uh, uh, psifas, this mosaic, I made it's like people are going from darkness to light. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said, now I'm going to give them revenge in the German embassy of everything they did to my father. Wow. And I was so happy. Wow. And they accepted. And in the, in the competition, it was an architect uh, competition, and this was in the front page, my drawing, about everything, every Jewish seat, they will understand that we are talking about Jewish who are going to be victim and become like Andrew, something like this. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And then I came to Israel because I wanted to know what is the reason that my concept wasn't sure. So I said to him, it's because I was born in Enkar, a very small village beside Jerusalem. And this was my inspiration because it was a house that was just built uh, with stones inside. And another thing is that we used to run as the children to rocks and it was the king was sitting and then two others. So this was my village and this was my inspiration. So I came there, I came from Germany, I went to this village, I took the photos, and suddenly came out a woman. And she said, why are you taking these photos? Because uh, we belong to the organization. I said, we just, why? So I told her about my story. She thought, because they thought maybe we belong to the organization. I asked, which kind of organization you? Then she said to me, she's from the organization of um, Shalom uh, like excuse, the second generation from Germany come to Israel to help in hospital and uh, mm -hmm. ah, from Germany. Germany. It's, it's, very big, uh, uh, it's very big volunteer. Uh, uh, and Sarah was looking at her. She was second generation, and I was second generation. And suddenly, not my father, not her father, only we. And then I understand that the uh, destiny or karma of my father, it was his, and my karma, it was mine. <laughs> wow. Yeah, there's so many complications like that when we think in a limited way. Um, I think that this topic is so profound and we have to think about it a lot and allow it to affect our mind over a long period of time. And think very carefully about everything that happens to us, everything we do, with great humility. And not think we know the answer to everything. Um, it's a difficult topic. I mean, in some ways this is the most difficult topic. Because it's the most hidden. It's very hidden, this topic. Um, you will, so the third point is, you will not experience the results of something you didn't do. Um, and then the th fourth topic is whatever you do is never lost it's never wasted now the exception is if you purify if it's a negative thing you did then you can, you can neutralize it or stop it but if you don't stop it one day it will come back to you but also the positive things you do are not lost they will come back to you so, th these, are, these are the teachings about karma. It's like uh, the science of karma, in a way. It's trying to explain to us how karma works. Um, I can't prove them to you. I can't prove these points to you. Uh, it's beyond me to do that. I can only tell you about them, the way that they're taught in the traditional teachings, and I can only say, since I learned those things, I tried to live my life according to this teaching. And I found it's a useful way to understand what happens to me and what I do. And it, it, it does make sense to me. I never, I never found any reason to say it's not true. But I can't say I can prove it to you. I can't. When I learned the first time about karma, I was really, it was really very, very interesting, of course, and very appealing, and very... I had many, many questions, but when I looked at our patients, and we say that, they, sorry, not patients, mm -hmm. that if you are a moral, live an ethic life, you're very, very, very calm. Mm -hmm. And I saw Nurit, and I saw the father, and I said, they're right. And I think if you, if you look at the things that they are uh, given in karma, you know, the gross, levels of karma. Mm -hmm. If you look in the world, you can understand that uh, 
think that as the political Buddhism says, you can see, you see, if somebody is living morally, it's much harder than people who live less harsh. Less All I can say is it's a particular lens through which you can look at the world. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. But you have to choose whether or not you want to look through that lens, because there's other lenses possible. Some people here are psychologists. And there are different psychological lenses that you can use, and they don't all agree with karma. Some of them are different. And you mentioned Judaism has this particular theory about the, the, the you know, the, the negative things, the poison from the father. No, the fruits, the, the best fruits. The okay. Anyway. The so the point is that's another lens. So in a way, each of us is free to choose our own lens. I'm telling you, I chose to look through the Buddhist lens, and for me, it was very helpful and still is, and I never found any reason for myself to reject it. But it, it's up to you, it's not for me to tell you what to think. Yeah. Question, so basically, uh, according to this uh, big we, we actually choose, our soul actually, in our mind, or whatever it chooses, its own parent, it's automatically? No, 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 not consciously, no, no, no. But through karma, <coughs> yes. So one way that um, our teacher Geshe Wangchen described it is that, you know, in the, uh, when it's windy and there's many leaves on the ground, the wind blows the leaves into a pile and they stay there. And then later another wind comes and blows them apart. So in this example, the pile <coughs> is the mind and body of this life. And the wind which blew them there is the karma that brought this life. And the shape of this life is that particular, the way the wind blew those. And then the wind that comes and blows them apart is the wind which blows us to the next life. And so we don't choose it. The wind is something that is our responsibility, but nevertheless we, we don't have control over it. It's said that until you realize emptiness, after that then you have some control because your, your, um, your rebirth is conditioned by karma. By, sorry, compassion, by compassion. So in that sense, uh, they, they say that at a certain level, they can choose their rebirth. For, ex for example, Lama Yeshi, uh, there's some video actually of him meeting his future parents. Wow. And he, he was talking to them, and uh, he said something which maybe suggested, maybe I will come to you in, in future, something like that. And then uh, he was born in Spain, and then Lama Zopa Rinpoche went there, and he did. He stayed up all night doing these various investigations, and eventually he came to the conclusion, this child is Lama Yeshe. Mm. And then they went to check with His Holiness Dalai Lama, and he did some further checking. They have all these checking methods in uh, Tibetan tradition. And then, yeah, he said, yeah, that is, that is him. And now he's Osong, and... Uh, like Lama Yeshe, he's a big rebel, and uh, he kind of um, he, he presents the Dharma in a way which is quite unorthodox, but it's very immediate, and that is exactly how Lama Yeshe was. But uh, Osul is more Facebook generation. Lama Yeshe was more hippie generation. So they have different language and different style, but there's. In, in my opinion, when I see Oso teach in the video, can you hear that? I can see a similar uh, mentality. Yeah. yeah. That's, my, that's just my perception. But maybe I'm projecting. Okay. I'm just mentioning it. Because it, it's, there are many stories like that in our time um, about the reincarnate lamas. But they are very high beings, so maybe they can choose. But for us, Maybe it's very subtle, so we don't know. Sorry. Maybe. You think you chose your Islam? <coughs> <coughs> I'm asking myself if this was yeah. this is probably my responsibility. When my sister was born, she responsibility. Well, when we say responsibility, we don't necessarily mean a conscious responsibility. No, not conscious. No, no, no. Sometimes it just happens that we come into something positive because we created some positive causes, but we don't remember what the causes are. We didn't yeah. choose consciously. It's interesting. Yes. I want to ask you about, the, the, for me, I don't, uh, the 
relation between emptiness and interrelated, because for me it's like a conflict mm -hmm. between emptiness and interrelatedness mm -hmm. and the karma, which is continuity of something. So mm -hmm. I don't understand the... Okay, so karma is a kind of interrelatedness. It's a cause and effect. So the, the cause... The, the cause is related to the effect. The effect is related to the cause. So these two are interdependent. Okay? And therefore empty. But also, because of being empty, they are effective. Emptiness does not mean non-existent. Yeah, okay. So because of emptiness, we can say karma is possible. The karmic cause and effect is possible because of emptiness. Okay. I'm going to leave it there. I mentioned... Oh, yeah, you have one more? Regarding to what we saw before, right? Yeah. I don't know if you have time to address it, but the question regarding jails and the justice system, uh -huh. because if we are kind of creating, like, the chuki, what did chuki have to do with the bad smell that he ate? Uh -huh. so, mm -hmm. And so what, what, what is the Buddhist tradition? Uh, what is, I don't know if you have time to address, address it, but it's something that well, means it's bothering me a well, lot. Justice. The justice. What is the justice? Because if we create our... Own thing, and we basically it's that person's karma. Okay. Okay. Let's use an example. I'm going. Just answering. Let's use the example that I'm a thief, and I steal something, <laughs> and then the police come and they catch me, and I have to pay a fine or go to prison. Okay. So, we, this is a social arrangement this justice. It's to protect people from thieves and it's just to try and discourage people from stealing. Okay? It's the law. But the karma is something much deeper. Supposing that I steal from you and the police don't catch me, does that mean that I'm free? Maybe I think so. But the karma is that it will come back to me. Okay. But like we spoke about the, 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 the <coughs> sexual abuse and the rape. Yeah. If the one that was raped is the one that the karma was just came to the ripen, mm -hmm. so it, why do we need a justice system? Because if somebody... Mm -hmm. We need a justice system to protect the citizens. Social rape. Yeah, and I also, I think, to protect the perpetrators, too, to help them see. Because it's not that... It's your karma to murder somebody, as you said. That's a choice. And to help people make good choices for their future, they need to see that there's some, you know, they may not understand karma, but they might see cause and effect, I'll go to prison. Mm -hmm. okay. I sort of, through the uh, um, learning, I think I find karma a sort of a very good basic for future practice. Mm -hmm. Because when something is okay, came out okay, mm -hmm. I say, I must have, if I find what sort of can think about what could have caused it, I mm -hmm. do. But mm -hmm. if something not so good happens, and I try to think what causes could have brought it, bring it through, Mm -hmm. Then I sit and practice in order that I will not be doing something similar later. Right. I agree. This is one of the purposes of the teaching. Yeah. To help us to know what to do. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the next activity is another discussion with a partner. And the, this question is a technical question. And it's a difficult one. And uh, some of you may know from previous studies the answer, or maybe you just think about it. How can the result of an action performed in this life, how can the result come in a future life? How can that happen? So, how can it happen that if I do something in this life, that in a future life I will experience the result? Not I, somebody else. Well, yeah, but okay, the same continuum of mind. How can a, a, another person with this mental continuum experience something which I did in this life? 
the, the result. result. How can they experience the result? Mm -hmm. How does that happen? What's the, <coughs> what's the process by which that happens? Okay, so maybe uh, choose a different partner from last time, maybe turn the opposite way or something like that. Yeah, because we came to the